uh, just to get that going. Um, cool. So, uh, Chen, you got the first item. Yeah. So basically, uh, the, the uh, I have is to let's review this uh, uh, diving for uh, in, uh, you know uh, the escalation process uh, Q and A. I'm going to share this doc after this meeting with uh, in the meeting invitation and uh, hold the Q&A tomorrow morning. So I hope everybody got a chance to read through. You pretty much can ignore the first sections of the introduction of the thing, but uh, look, go through, glance through the Q&A questions and see if the answers make sense. Um, it, I think this meeting is a very limited timing. So if you want to do it after this meeting, that's also fine. Just to uh, add your comments in the doc, I will incorporate your comments there. So, yeah. Did we get an answer back from legal on contracts or anything? Not yet. Like I sent an email on uh, Sunday evening. Uh, I, I kind of want to wait a couple of days, then uh, ping back. So I, I sent to Jamie, uh, Steve, and the CCDU, and um, I forgot the other one. So uh, I will follow up. Okay. All right. Um, the other one that I had in here, and I didn't know how to necessarily edit it, but uh, can we make it volunteer based? You start with in theory, yes, but we don't explicitly say uh, we're not pursuing that option. Should we put that in there explicitly? Uh, I had that question here, right? Yeah, volunteer based. I, I Do you, I mean, do we want to do the volunteer based? Because I think it's a Uncertainty. A I, lot of. I, I think if we do a volunteer base, there's going to be a lot of. Uh, that's more problematic. Like, I, I. That's my take. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, you know, it could be, could end up with a, always a small group of people, or for a particular week, there is no volunteer at all. It's just it's so much unpredictability, uh, it's hard to operate or practice in the reality. But that's my opinion. Maybe you guys can help justify if that makes sense, that concern makes sense. And uh, I understand you had a, a one year ago, there was a discussion, uh, and, uh, you know, using the smart thing, using the check the Slack status, then ping dynamically, who is uh, active on Slack. But the, the investment, the work to get that done seems uh, very heavy. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's not set up for that. Slack isn't really set up for that kind of thing. Um, I think volunteer base is not going to work. I think, you know, first of all, yeah, like you said, we, we've tried volunteer kind of things like that in the past, and it's hard to find uh, yeah. people. It's hard for people to plan their lives, too. If they're like, well, I think I'm volunteering for this week, but I'm not sure. So I'm not sure if I should take this seriously, whereas if there's a set schedule and everyone kind of knows ahead of time, I think it's a lot easier for people to plan. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's, that's my take. And also, you know, when you do the volunteer, it's, the accountability is hard. I mean, there's no accountability. You can't hold people accountable for, for that. Cool. Uh, so I updated it to basically say for this iteration, we are not going to use a volunteer-based model. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying to be explicit in there uh, from that perspective. Yeah. So I think... Let's. Uh, if I would welcome more comments there uh, after this meeting, please go ahead. I'm going to add the link to this doc in the meeting invitation by end of today. So please continue to review. If anything catch your eye, please uh, either just add it directly or ping me uh, or you know add a comment there. I will do the last round uh, by end of today. The add the link to the to the meeting invitation. Cool. Tim, you have any thoughts or concerns or? No, it was, my main question was, uh, did we already make a decision around front engineer, engineers or not? And then I already saw the uh, question perfectly. Qu question and answer worked. <laughs> I found it in there. So uh, yeah, because I think, I'm not sure how much we would need front end engineers to have on call. And if that is already setting up the scale even more, I think it can happen along the lines, uh, but but rather focus perhaps more on the backend engineer as this anyhow is quite a lot of work on, on establishing it first there and, and involving people. So, uh, cool. Thank, Thank you very much. 
I, I, I do have a, a little bit and I can put it in the, the doc as well. Um, and, and that's really more about the implementation uh, more than it is, you know, why this came about. And, and that is, you know, I, I see kind of three distinct scenarios. Um, you know, while the person is during their normal work hours, right? That's, that's a scenario, the scenario of extended hours. So basically they're, maybe they, they took the call on normal work hours, but um, it's, it's a, you know, it's a critical issue that's going late into the night. And then uh, what, what happens, at, you know, kind of at sort of off duty hours. Mm -hmm. um, and is there, uh, how, how are we going to, how are we going to compensate as far as are we going to give them like maybe the next day off since they work through the night or, you know, anyway, so the implementation detail aspect is really where uh, the feedback I've been getting from my team that yeah. uh, they're kind of keenly interested in. I, yeah. So I didn't put it in the doc, but please uh, go ahead. And in my personal practice in the past is uh, uh, make a one-to-one -one trade, one hour to one hour trade, and they can take off the time anytime later uh, within the next six months. Or uh, sometimes I can I give the 1.5 ratio. So you, you take, you spend one hour off hours, then you can take a one and a half hours off later uh, within the next six months, something like that. So we probably can design that scheme. Please throw your ideas there. If I, that makes sense to everybody, I'm going to talk to that tomorrow okay. morning. Yeah, maybe the way to approach that one is just to actually uh, put put it as part of an MR change, uh, MR proposed MR change, and then in the document just say we're working on that aspect to, to make it uh, to make it understood uh, from the perspective. I like the uh, trade of time. Uh, we may get some pushback as far as we don't have, you know, set vacation time, but uh, the expectation would be is, is that, uh, you know, that's that's obviously like uh, that's basically the expectation should be is is that uh, they should be able to offset that and uh, you know um, that would that would be kind of my expectation is just offset it with time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, the other thing is I did add one right at the end in case anybody read this earlier, which is you know what are, what are the expectations for my existing work while I'm on call and uh, we need to make sure all managers understand this. Expectation is is that they're on call and they're not doing anything else. Like like uh, you know if they make progress on things that's great. But like they should, they should work in a fashion where uh, the assumption is is that you know it's it, I almost put it in there like they're on vacation because I, but I don't want to say that because it kind of implies a calls vacation which it's not uh, obviously so um, but you know kind of the same model if you have an employee who goes out for a week uh, your expectations are they're unavailable for that week it's kind of the same same model from that perspective does that make sense yeah okay and let's make sure managers know that as well from that perspective cool. Cool. I think uh, this item is done. Uh, please continue to add your comments there. And Todd, thank you for your input. Please add your, your stuff there. Yep, I absolutely will. Thanks. Cool. Um, so uh, uh, Brooks threw this at me today, which is uh, he needs updates on uh, playing for Friday. We did all that work where they loaded it into Greenhouse, but he didn't update the spreadsheet for uh, Q3 as far as hiring plans go. Um, I was just looking now and I noticed that we had about 40 heads we were projecting to hire in uh, Q3. We actually have room for more, uh, so we should probably go back and one audit uh, anything that we have left over from Q2 and then add it potentially. Uh, Chen, you had some script you were running to compare it against the spreadsheet or how were you doing that? Uh, oh put that together. Uh, not a script, it's also a spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, somehow you got it to match Team YAML somehow, and I yeah. wasn't, wasn't sure how you were doing. It, it was a manual. It was a manual matching. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to use that as reference, but like if uh, folks have updates around that, and also um, the other key aspect is 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 like I said, we're 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 coming up probably a little bit shy uh, from perspective of uh, hiring expectations. So I want to make sure that uh, uh, we add those folks in because. Uh, um, um, recruiting says we've got a capacity for about 54 and it feels like we should, we should drive towards that goal. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, cool. And I can work with you in, in uh, one-on-ones for the rest of the week, or if you have questions, hit me up on Slack around that. 
The other thing is, uh, Tim, you had uh, some training. We should go ahead and put that request in. Uh, Brooke said it's, it is built in, uh, but he couldn't give me an amount. So until I get an amount, I'd just like to go ahead and make that request and, and we can get that uh, for that team that needs that extra training. Okay, good. And I will go ahead and tell Dara uh, that she goes ahead with it. And yeah. Thank you. All right, cool. Uh, reminder, there's a secure coding training next week on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, I would love to attend, but unfortunately I'm on uh, vacation as is Tim and Dahlia. So uh, 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 please please keep that in mind uh, as we go into next week. Um, but uh, make sure that, uh, um, uh, um, please make sure that, that folks are aware. Uh, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, my, my main topic is, was this planned for a longer period because it was like, I think it was just announced last week. And, and of course the planning is a little bit disrupted with two full days. And I had a couple of people who were like, should I, should I go? Do I have to go? Should I have to watch it afterwards recorded? And, um, and simply the sense of, okay, just announcing that a week before the actual thing is um, a little bit disruptive to the planning as it's really like two days, which is uh, quite much. I, I, I'm very happy about the training. That's that's not the point. Uh, so it's more about the, that we plan this a little bit ahead, uh, so that managers and product managers also know about it. So one thing is is they are recording it, so uh, we should be able to um, we should be able to provide that to people. So uh, you know, my view is 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 at this point it's optional. We may make uh, reviewing the recording a requirement at some point, um, um, but. Uh, Right now, that that's kind of the overall guidance. Uh, though, you know, if uh, if if it's the cost between us uh, uh, making a deliverable and not making a deliverable, let's just make sure we're articulate in that fashion, uh, from that perspective, and then we can kind of work that. Um, the person probably to ask is Kathy as far as when when it was planned out, because uh, I didn't I didn't see an announcement until about two weeks out um, from that perspective. Cool. All right. Uh, next one is, is uh, everybody's one-on-ones probably are filled with some form of uh, talking about Q2 scoring and uh, Q3 uh, planning. So um, the big thing is, is uh, go ahead and start creating your issues. I've already done it where I've created draft issues uh, up on the board for Q3. Um, so uh, please start that because uh, we want to try to hit uh, August 1st running. Uh, with at least our, our, our proposed uh, drafts and, and uh, starting to execute towards that. Any questions on that or concerns? And uh, we'll have a couple weeks after the quarter starts to finish up grading, but if you have uh, progress, that's also good for uh, kind of us all to be aware of. Cool. I'm going to just keep rifling through these because we only got 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, consulting and professional service background candidates. So uh, one thing that uh, Eric's raised is a concern around the fact that we've been hiring uh, a few folks. I won't say a lot of folks, but a few folks uh, with uh, either professional services or consulting backgrounds. Um, these people generally interview vet better than most, most engineers uh, because they have to do it a lot more. Uh, is what we found. Uh, also, they uh, can have challenges with uh, understanding how to do product development. So that he's uh, asking for feedback around that. Uh, one thing that Steve's doing is he's basically looking to see how much the statistics actually play into this, as far as you know how many people we've done in this fashion. Because there's anecdotal data, but there's not necessarily uh, data to back it up. Um, we may move product uh, development experience into the requirements, or we may just make a. a two to three of the, or three of the nice to haves, like a optional two of three, but I don't know if folks have feedback on that or if they have a preference or other feedback around that. Uh, I personally run into, recently run into a candidate interviewed very well with other products people, which uh, both Craig and I, we felt his background is purely consulting, interviewed very well. <laughs> but uh, we discovered the, the little things that doesn't feed our, our you know, product workflow. Yeah, I, I had the feeling we are rejecting a fair number below that, though obviously some are coming through, so it's just something we have to be very cognizant of. Um, I guess the question would be is if we want to change our requirements around this, or if, if uh, folks have a strong opinion against or for uh, from that regard. At this point, okay, all right. So we'll, let me continue the discussion with Eric and we'll continue the engineering discussion 
uh, you may see an adjustment where we uh, do it. More than likely, we'll try to probably to have we'll try to have some moratorium on uh, current applicants, uh, like we did for the uh, star rating. Um, is my guess as we go through that. So, cool. Uh, performance indicators. Uh, this is something I don't know if you saw the MA today, but uh, Eric's been working on uh, basically pushing these down so that every role has uh, specific performance indicators associated with it. There's a draft document there. Uh, if you want to provide feedback on that, please uh, feel free to do that. It's also something to be looking at because it kind of helps to set the stage for expectations around that. Do, do we have an MR or is it still the discussion in the doc? Good question. Uh, my understanding is it's still a discussion in the doc. Uh, he asked us to have drafts by Friday. Uh, I don't know the status of when, when he's planning to move that. I think I think it's a conversation he and Sid are having and, and uh, you know, the first step was just create the draft and then go from there. Tim, you have a comment? Yeah, um, the first version of the source code KPIs Periscope dashboard is up. Yeah, it's semi-automatic at the moment, uh, but as it looks right now, it will be automatic until the end of the week before I go on my holiday. So um, this is currently showing front-end coverage, Jest and Karma. Always keep in mind, Karma is going down, which is a good thing because Jest should be going up. Um, and we are converting that. We are also looking, uh, Vini has built uh, a test script to cover files against files, uh, not depending on the on the type of the front end uh, uh, test tool. So this means that we should also get the statistics on actual file numbers, how many of those are, are tested, etc. Um, and the other nice and interesting thing is the backend test coverage, but also as I was basically going through all the uh, commits on master. Um, I was also able to get uh, data on the number of red masters per week. So you can also see that uh, current user stats and still need to try it and figure out manually if we simply have raised the number because we're doing more MRs or if there was simply some bad weeks or if everything is updated uh, afterwards at a later point. But this should give us also a quick uh, overview of how we are doing there. Christopher, it's yours. Thanks for doing that, Tim. Sorry, I was uh, trying to write a quick note on, on my out. Uh, yeah, the next one I got is, is uh, basically, uh, there was a, a, a temporary hold on both China and Russia. Uh, Michael McBride, uh, our CRO, basically became the, the DRI on uh, basically our, our, Fed, um, our Fed strategy. And uh, as such, he made the decision that we can continue, development can continue to hire both for China and Russia. And uh, to my understanding, there's no restrictions around that either in role or our uh, position. So I think, I think we're in pretty good shape there. Cool, Dahlia, you're next. Sorry, couldn't <laughs> couldn't unmute for some reason. Um, so I I wanted to uh, bring this topic. This was a question from um, one of the managers that used to report to me and 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 no longer, uh, you know, moved to a much better director. <laughs> so um, the the. I used to hold, well, I still hold a staff meeting and a, and a big part of the agenda is relaying topics that we discuss here, that we, that we discuss in Eric's meeting. Uh, but just to bring those conversations to the managers, uh, it's not something very specific to us and that was the observation. So I wanted to ask here um, if Christopher, you wanted to hold something for all of the engineering managers because I'm sure we as directors are probably relaying the same topics. Um, so it would be good for them to also discuss amongst each other and build that peer relationship. Um, so just want to present it to you. The, the disadvantage of putting everyone there is that we may have a very large group as we're growing or, or you know, each of us um, have a good number of managers. So that will be a, a lot of people participating, but the nice thing is efficiency because we'll be talking about, you know, the same topic and not having to each director repeat. Yeah, so do you think it's mainly just topics that are coming from the development discussion or is it ad hoc, to ad hoc topics that uh, managers want to discuss as a, as a larger group? 
I think for the most part, they're, they're topic driven from the things that, that we have conversations about here or in Eric's staff meeting. Um, there are some times where um, if a team is struggling with a particular thing, bringing that topic uh, results in other managers basically jumping on and saying, oh, I have the same problem on my team. How, do, how are you looking at resolving it? Um, but that tends to be the blend, less so of these ad hoc topics though, um, from what I've seen. So I'm 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 uh I'm inclined to to say yes. Uh, I guess the question would be is is how frequently do we think we need this? Like what's the what's you know like I I'll, I'll need help generating content uh, potentially for a discussion, um, uh, which you know I would expect uh, most of the directors in this discussion to potentially have. If it's just a if it's just a regurgitation of the development staff meeting, uh, I could try to get better about posting online, and people could watch that. Though that leaves out the participation per, per participation aspect of it. So, so I don't know what others' thoughts are uh, from that perspective. If, if they would they think that form would find valuable, or if if uh, what what folks' thoughts are. So I know. Uh... I know my team, uh, Olivier in particular, is is keenly interested in that. Uh, he he finds that uh, the the meetings that uh, Dahlia used to host on this were were very valuable, and it helped um, also kind of reach across the the aisle with with other managers. Um, so that that was kind of the you know the the driving factor behind it. So I, I think it is the the participation aspect and that and, and some form of commiseration <laughs> with it, uh, so they can you know speak with other managers and and help come up with better solutions. So it feels like aside from the topics, there is also a little bit of social uh, factors here among all the managers who want just want to meet in person. Would you prefer an office hours format or would you prefer more of a, of a, here's the things we we'll review every week and here's the top of mind? Well, the nice thing if, if we're doing like changes like the on-call rotation, that could be instead of, you know, doing the AMA ad hoc, we, that could be part of the meeting where you, Christopher, can share the topic or any one of us has a topic that we share and allow the managers to consume it and ask questions and so on. Um, Again, that's my two cents on it. We, we can definitely apply a different format. Yeah, and I think there are also a couple of topics that they love to discuss between each other. Um, so I'm, I'm also trying to infuse a little bit of know-how, not only on a technical level from dev to CI, CD package, but also on a manager level to help them a little bit on just daily routines and how have you solved this and that. And I think it, it doesn't need to be on something weekly, I think, um, just let's get started on a monthly basis, basis or something like that to so simply try it out and see how many topics there are and what topics they can come up with. So I think it can be definitely valuable and as also Jun said, it, there is also a social factor to be more of, hey, I'm, I can reach out or even out, out of my staff meeting, uh, as long as we don't overdo it and have meetings over meetings. <laughs> everyone will be happy. Yeah, that's the thing I'm, I'm trying to think about from that perspective. Um, okay. Uh, you think we should do it monthly, bi-weekly? Talia, what's your feedback there? Were you thinking weekly since you were originally? Um, I think it, it, it's weekly may, may be too much, uh, bi-weekly or monthly. I, I mean, I feel we're going to have a lot of topics. I tend to run out of time in my staff meeting to cover everything. Um, so my hope is actually elevating it means that I get to cover less. Um, so we can cut down on our weekly meeting and rely on these general topics being covered maybe bi-weekly by, um, you know, across all, all of development. Okay, what, what day of the week best works for people? Everybody gets to vote. Tim? Monthly. Let's start with monthly. If we see that we run out of time. Uh, yeah, no, it's a day a week. Like which day of the week are you thinking? Or does it matter? Monday. 
Monday. Okay, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, yeah, the moment, so. <laughs> Dahlia? <laughs> I'll I'll work with whatever schedule because it it seems <laughs> my days tend to be full regardless of what day. So I'll okay. make room for it. Okay, Chen. Uh, what day doesn't matter to me, but uh, monthly probably sounds a good starting point. Okay, uh, Todd. Yeah, same. Um, I, I guess uh, Mondays are are already uh, pretty busy, so may as well just make Monday the meeting day and. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm good with Monday and then probably monthly and I'm, yeah, same thing. I'd just be curious to see if we run out of time or not with the topics and then adjust from there. Okay. All right. What I'll do is, is, uh, oh, this is an experiment. Uh, I'll set up a time when I get back, uh, for this cause I'm out, obviously out next week. Uh, we'll start with Mondays. I'm not doing it the first Monday I'm back by the way, just FYI. Um, uh, and we'll start with a bi-weekly cadence, uh, just, uh, alternate, you know, what I'll do is I'll alternate time. So like one will be, uh, uh, probably, uh, I'm guessing 11 o'clock hour Monday, uh, cause I think that's an open, open window, uh, that's 11 central. So, uh, um, so 9 AM, um, Pacific and then, uh, probably four 30 or five, uh, for to cover APAC, um, uh, or three o'clock, uh, Pacific. Uh, as it were, Tim, I got to get my math in my head of your time zone so that I can, I can, I can start just everybody just go through the list of you know, central to Pacific to Austria, uh, and then APAC as well for Bartek. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, appreciate the feedback. Um, we'll give it a shot. We'll see. Um, I had the feeling if we go bi-weekly, if we go monthly, I have the feeling it won't get consistency enough to First to make it valuable. So I think that's that's why I'm gonna shoot for that to initially, Tim, but we'll, let's see how much content we have. Minimally, I can review the, the MR uh, progress, uh, which you know is, I know, top of mind for everybody. Cool. Uh, and then Tim, you had the last item. Yeah, I just wanted to bring up, as we discussed this also in our one-on-one -on -one last week, is this holiday situation next week. So I will be also out from, uh, starting from Monday on uh, until Monday or Tuesday, the week after. Um, and then we figured out that uh, Christopher is out and Dahlia is out. So uh, I just wanted to let you know, uh, I will be basically just, just at the lake. Um, so if, if needed, I can jump in. Someone can ping me also on topics and I can help out. If needed, I will also let my managers know that if they really need to, then they can press the notification button twice. Uh, but uh, as I'm not too far away from my machine, that's it. Yeah, and uh, Chen, since you're the uh, most tenured uh, director left uh, standing <laughs> for next week, uh, 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 I'll have them escalate issues to you if need be. Uh, I'll be also available, um, though I know like one of the days I'll be out, but I'll be checking in every day uh, because I got to just keep up on uh, 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 hiring approvals. So um, uh, if, if you have something pertinent, don't hesitate to reach out to me on Slack. And uh, just you may have a delayed response depending on. Uh, which part of Maui I'm on. I'll try my best. Be the good monkey on the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Anything else we need to discuss? All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.